Good day, everybody. Welcome back to Teaching Methods of English. We are going to continue with Unit 2, the ESL policy and syllabi. And today is part 3, whereby we'll be focusing on the NSSCO syllabus. So the cover page tells us that the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Education, Art and Culture, Preparing of Namibia, Namibian Senior Secondary Certificate, so NSSC. O, all right. So that's where the C O comes from, ordinary level, and this is for grades ten to eleven, and it was first implemented in twenty nineteen, and the first examination was last year, twenty twenty. As I've told you, <clears throat> uh, every document usually has a table of content, all right, table of content which guides you as to uh, where to find what information. Here we can see we have got introduction, rationale, aim, additional information, learning content, which is divided into five parts. And then we have got assessment, and then assessment is divided into a number of sections. We have got the, the six, uh, five sections, and the fifth section is divided into four sections. And we'll see all that information in details later. And then we have got the grade descriptions, and then... Uh, Addendum is more, um, addendum is the same as annex, um, uh, appendices, like it's extra information that is uh, provided. And then we have got how to conduct the speaking examination, general criteria of guided, uh, task 5 guided writing, general marking cr criteria for task 6 extended writing, and then we have got marking grid for guided writing. And then we have got marking grade for extended writing and speaking assessment uh, criteria grade. So that's what this document will uh, encompass. And here we go. We have got the introduction of, you know, what is this um, syllabus about, like which level. And then it will tell you that the subject is um, not only taught in isolation English as a, as a language by itself, but then it's linked to other subjects. Across, across the curriculum, just as we've seen in uh, the syllabus for grade uh, uh, 8 and 9. And yeah, here we have got extra information of word, like what guides this syllabus. It's like the National Curriculum for Basic Education. So I, I, I'll suggest that you find that document. And then for everything else, I'll suggest that you read it with your time. All right, so what are the National Curriculum Guidelines? Um, aim to do and then we have got the six what it aims and I think I have given you this as an activity to do for your class and then um, we have got the language contributes directly to the development of six core that are marked as uh, with the asterisk but then it contributes to all of this but the ones that have asterisks are the ones that are called the six core skills so, language is supposed to uh, contribute to the development of communication skills, numerical, numeracy skills, information skills, problem-solving skills, self-management and comp competitive skills, social and cooperative skills, physical skills, work and study skills. All right, and then here we have got our rationale. What is the rationale of this syllabus? Adapts, like, why? Like, the why behind the whole syllabus, the rationale. And then it even tells us that you know, when you are teaching English, we have got the skills. Usually we look at the skills, let's say listening, speaking, reading and writing in isolation. But then when you teach it, it should be integrated. You cannot teach it just focusing on listening by itself. But but it should be um, uh, integrated or combined with other skills. Obviously, if the learners are listening... How do you know that they understood what they are listening? They need to speak, read, or, I mean, write, for instance, speak or write. So that's why you cannot really um, uh, teach the skills in isolation. In addition to that, we should remember that the approach that is also used is the learner center, like the learner's eye at the center of the, of the teaching, you know. Uh, that's what you should keep in mind. And then what are the aims? All right. The aims, what, it, what are the aims of this syllabus is to develop the ability to use language effectively, accurately, appropriately for the purpose of practical communication in, 
in speech and writing, understand and respond appropriately to what they hear, read, and experience, enjoy, appreciate the variety of language, enjoy reading as a means of exploring areas of universal human concern, form a sound base for the skills required for further study, employment, using languages of medium, you know, of communication, and then develop an awareness of nature of language and learning language learning skills. So that's what uh, the aim of this, um, of the syllabus is. It's just not to teach them, how, you know, grammar or how to write a letter, but it should be beyond, you know, the usage outside the classroom when when they get um, employed. They should be able to, to use the language in those settings and, uh, um, and then enjoy it. And appreciate a variety of language it's just so much more it's, it's bigger than just you know the activities that we give them in the classroom they should help them develop in that sense and as you yeah you know if we are to go back to the rationale it's like language stimulates personal growth so we should help them you know grow personally uh, for them also to develop general um, knowledge, attitudes, critical ability, moral values, the aesthetic sense. Do you get what I mean? Like, it's like we have to develop the learners as a whole. And then when we move on, we have got additional information. Under the additional information, we've got guided learning hours. How many hours or like how long should we um, cover this syllabus. It says that the national curriculum for basic uh, education indicates that this subject should be taught for nine periods of 40 each per seven cycle, seven day cycle, or seven periods for 40 minutes each per five day cycle over two years. So that's how long it should be. We have nine periods. Uh, nine periods of a seven day cycle so for example if you have got the seven day cycle like you have day one two three four five six seven you should have at least nine periods that are made out of 40 minutes but then if you have a five day cycle like monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday then it should be seven periods which should uh take about 40 minutes each um over the two years so that's what it basically means and then we we move on to prior learning so for the learners who are going to cover this content they should have completed the junior secondary level so it in uh, it tells you because it's building on the junior secondary level um, content what has been learned there and then progression so it tells you that um after they have completed this syllabus, they can either, you know, directly be employed or proceed to further their qualification. Learners who are awarded C2, C2 A star in SSC are well prepared to follow the courses leading to the National Senior Secondary Certificate Advanced sub Subsidiary uh, level. So that's what they say for anybody to go to this level. NSCCAS level, they should get at least a C to A star. So that is the policy here. All right, and I'm going to refrain from commenting on any of that. And then supporting for second language teacher, what kind of support do they have? They say that there's a cat uh, catalog of the senior secondary textbook which is found at the, on the NIED website and then also when we teach we just don't uh, depend on the textbook but we can use other resources for example newspaper magazine videos dictionary thesaurus encyclopedia internet to help you with preparing for your lessons and then examples of other you know of resources that the teachers have is the syllabus which is what we are looking at resources listed on the on the teacher on the textbook catalog so you can find it on the NEAD website the teacher guide uh, that you buy or the school provides for you i have got the language policy guide we have gone through that there are also cds that comes um comes with the textbook that i have been um uh, approved or that you can find in the textbook catalog um textbook for the learners or the teachers and then the support that the teachers can get is face-to-face -face workshop on the syllabus interpretation and implementation so that will be 
uh, done by either NEED or the Ministry of Education and ad uh, teacher advisories can also provide services, you know, support when you're teaching. We have spoken about that when we're looking at the uh, language policy. You get support from NEED, you know, the, the ones who put together um, workshops and whatnot. And then DNEA. So they, they are supposed to give you also support when it comes to uh, examine assessment, uh, construction assessment, like how do you carry out assessment? They can provide uh, uh, services and other uh, institutions that also provide support is the program and quality assurance PQA. We have got the sure institutions like you know we are supposed to provide you know support to teachers and NAMCOL and so forth and the teacher resources centers so that's where you can get get support and then community support that you get communities like regional cluster and uh, second meetings that's where you can that's where the community can get like information and you about the community you can get information from regional cluster and circuit meetings all right we are moving on i want to for us to go as fast as possible and then here we've got the learning content just like the other syllabus that we have looked at uh, the the junior secondary one we have got the learning content is divided into five sections if I'm not mistaken yeah five sections we'll see we have got the listening we have got um, the speaking we have got the reading the writing and the grammar language usage so the learning content what will be covered in the in the classroom is divided in these sections and then for each learning content it has got object like we have got the listening skill and then the listening skills it's like it has explicit uh, objectives of what will be learned and the competencies of what the learners the the values the the knowledge that the learner should demonstrate uh, or the skills, experiences, uh, the skills that the learners should demonstrate at the end of the course. But then when we are writing um, <clears throat> objectives, let's say for the lesson plan, you say by the end of the lesson, learners will be, will listen to, un to understand a, ra a range of text. And then there's also a section for competencies. By the end of the lesson, learners should be able to and then you write the competency, demonstrate, understand of instruction and directions. Those are just some of the examples. And then we have got more uh, skills, I mean, more um, objectives. You can see, demonstrate uh, more sk uh, skills, as in objectives and competencies that are under listening, listening for pleasure. And then the competence are listening to var various um, texts for pleasure, could be fiction or nonfiction you get like we have a number of them and I'll, I'll always advise you that you should go through this uh, thoroughly on your own and then when you are looking at different skills on their own we'll also look at the um, objectives of these objectives and competencies uh, in a little bit more detail than now for now we just want to look at the structure of the syllabus but what, what does it entail and then moving on to the speaking skills is the same. The structure is the same as the how the listening um, skill uh, section is um, divided. And we have got the learn objectives, objectives on this side, and then we've got the competencies. And this is what we have for listening objectives. For listening continues, and it continues further, continues more. All right, and then we have got now for reading uh, objectives. We have the division, uh, how they are divided is the same. We've got, you know, the objectives and the competencies. So read and understand instruction and directions. And then respond to uh, written instruction appropriately or demonstrate knowledge and understanding for of key instructional words such as explain, identify, and whatnot. And then reading continues, reading continues, reading skills continues. And then we've got the writing skills. Here we've got objectives is for learners to develop, organize and produce ideas on 
into coherent sentences, paragraphs, and whole text. And these are the objectives of how to attain this uh, objective. This is what they should demonstrate, like they should be able to do. And then we have more writing skills, which ends here. And then afterwards, we've got grammar and language usage, the objectives and the competencies. So demonstrate knowledge uh, used of various tenses. We have got the tenses here. And then use of conditional correctly, um, grammatical structure that we have. And then use of grammatical structure correctly. Oh, that one continues. And then we have got other ones. And then there are competencies. So that's what we have now in the learning content. That's what the learners need to attain from this uh, course. That's what they're going to learn. And they should be able to demonstrate at the end when they are going to be assessed. And uh, when they leave school, they should be able to demonstrate these skills because they, we are looking at this with an assumption that this information will help them to have personal, to grow personally, like have personal growth coming out of this. And then also acquiring all these other uh, skills, like critical thinking from these lessons, just to mention but a few. All right, now we are moving on to assessment. All right, so part six, number six of this syllabus is assessment. And for the assessment, we have got the assessment objectives, like how, what are they going to assess the learners when it comes to uh, reading? Like what do they want the learners to demonstrate? Being able to identify and retrieve information, facts and details, um, understand ideas, opinion and attitude, show understanding of connection between ideas, opinions and um, attitudes, understand what is implied but not actually written, you know, such as, you know, gist, relationship, writer's purpose, intention, writer's feeling, situation, or place. And then we have got the writing part, like assessment, objective, which is for writing. So we've got assessment, objective one is for reading, assessment objective is for writing, assessment objective is for listening, assessment four is for speaking. So three is listening, two is writing, and um, one is reading. And here we can see that we don't have like assessment objective for grammar usage because that is what you will get. You will grammar usage, you will get it uh, indirectly or it is part of the four skills. And then when it comes to assessment objective for writing, learners should be able to demonstrate, you know, to communicate information, idea, ideas, opinions, clearly, accu accurately and effectively organize ideas into coherent paragraphs using a range of correct linking words and phrases, use a variety of grammatical structure. You can see you know, like the grammatical structure and vocabulary and that is now grammar usage and language is, is assessed indirectly. And then uh, show control of punctuation and spelling, use appropriate register style uh, for a given for the given purpose. And then listening, like what is the assessment objective? Identify and retrieve information if Information, facts, and details, understand ideas, opinion, and attitude, show understanding of the connection between ideas, opinion, and attitudes, understand what it implies but not actually stated, stated, the gist, for example, the gist, uh, speaker's purpose and or intention, speaker's emotion, situation, or place. And then when it comes to uh, the fourth assessment objective, which is on speaking, um, it's communicate. Uh, learners should be able to communicate ideas, opinion clearly, um, clearly, accurately, effectively, and appropriately. Awareness of the audience and style. So, audience always affect how people communicate. When you're communicating with a friend or when you're communicating with a principal, for example, there is a difference, and they should be aware of that. Convey information, express opinion effectively. Use a variety of grammatical structure and vocabulary accurately and effectively. Use correct pronunciation, and intonation. Engage in conversation and contribute effectively to to help steer the discussion forward. So those are the assessment objective. Now we are moving on to the scheme of assessment. Remember, scheme of work, that is a guide of like, it's telling you scheme of work is like what content you're going to cover uh, during a certain period of time. And then scheme of assessment is like 
what is going to be covered in the examination. So here we can see that you know the learners after completing this course they have a chance to get uh, to either get a star to G. If they get lower than G obviously they will get uh, a U and the highest is a star and then we have got um, or they call it A plus and then we have got the G which is the lowest. And then paper three speaking is counted in the papers of the assessment die as follow. Oh yeah, I mean like every paper is included within these grades. So paper one is the reading and uh, reading and writing, which takes about two and, and a half minutes, two hours thirty minutes, and that's paper one. Paper two, which is listening, takes about fifty minutes, and then paper three speaking takes about. 10 to 15 minutes all right and then how much do they wait uh we'll see later when we are looking at the papers uh in more details it's like uh the reading and writing paper is out of um it's out of 70 all right and then uh, the listening paper is out of 40 the speaking paper is out of 30 and remember that in the end the paper needs to be converted into 100%. Do you get what I mean? So there's a weight of 100%. At the end, the learners need to get 100% from the examination. They can possibly get 100%. And then you can see here the reading and writing paper, it weighs 60% out of that 100%. All right. And then the listening is 20%. And then the speaking is 20. Like that's how the weight uh, the weight is, uh, is distributed amongst these skills. So the reading and writing, obviously because they are two, they are out of 60. They weigh 60. This one weigh 20. This one weigh 20. All right. Uh, and then here, let's look now. The specification grid. So we have got the... Paper one, paper one, which is reading and writing, all right? Reading and writing. We can see that um, paper one, when it comes to the weight of the paper itself, because it's reading and writing, they say that the weight of that reading and writing paper, it's going to be 100. And then reading will weigh 50 and the writing will weigh 50. When it comes to paper two, because it's only listening, obviously it's going to weigh a hundred. That's just like looking at the paper itself, like the weight of the paper itself, but not so much of the weight that the learners will get at the end of the year. When it comes, I mean, at the end in the examination. When it comes to the examination, it's out of a hundred. So sixty is from the reading and writing, uh, twenty from listening, uh, and then twenty from speaking. But then when we are looking at the paper itself by itself. How is the weight distributed? Because here, reading and writing, there are two skills in one paper. Each skill will make up 50 to make 100. And then when it comes to listening, because there's only listening as a skill, all right, then we have got 100%. Because the other one is speaking only as a skill, it's 100%. It's not divided between the skills. All right. And then for more, like... Uh, breaking down of the marks we can see here the raw marks of the papers because remember we say that reading and writing paper paper one is out of uh, 70 so which means that the 70 is like 35 from reading and 35 from writing that's why they say is 50 50 because they all contribute the equal amount of uh, marks all right 50 50 so is um, uh, 35, 35, which makes up 70. And here we say the weight, which is going to contribute to the final grade, is 60. You can see here that uh, is 30, 30, which makes up 60, 60 percent. All right. And then when it comes to listening, we saw that the raw mark is 40, but then the weight is only 20. You know, this is now the weight towards the final grade, not looking at the paper only by itself, but the final grade. And then when it comes to speaking, it's 30 marks, you know, the marks are 30, but then the weight is 20 to make up 100% that the learners can get at the end of the year, the final examination. All right, so that's what we have. And now we have got description of the papers. 
All right, that's what we're going to look at. We saw that paper one, reading and writing, which takes, uh, which is, uh, um, will, which will be covered in two and, and a half minutes, two and thirty minutes, um, two and a half hours. In other words, uh, it's made. It's out of seventy, and then you can tell here that it's out of seventy. Total mark is seventy. And we can see here that we have got two sections, section A, which is on reading. And you can see here the total of reading is 35, as we have seen up there. And then for writing, section B is basically on writing. It's also out of 35, which makes up 70%. All right, now let's look at the reading section. The reading section in the examination, it will always be the same as this. They are not going to do it differently. That's why you have to be aware. You have to familiarize yourself with these tasks that they do in this so that you train your learners to do better in the examination. When you teach them, you know, teach them for a bigger picture, personal growth and um, develop all the core skills that they need in life. But also at the same time, we should not neglect the examination. All right. So you need to be familiar with the tasks that are uh, covered in each paper so that you train your learners. Be aware, like when they come into the examination, they won't be surprised. Like, oh, my gosh, this is how the examination looks like. I never knew like that. Um, uh, confuses the learners they panic sometimes because they are not aware of how they're going to be assessed so please familiarize yourself with this task all right we can see that the sec uh, the first section section a has four tasks and then it tells you like how the tasks will be reading um task which is open-ended question and then candidate reads a text of 450 to 550 words and then answer a series of questions candidate will write short answers also all right and then what type of text will they be given we'll have like article blogs web web pages brochure advertisement leaflets um guides report manual instruction and then this task this very first task is out of 10 10 marks and then task two is multiple multiple matching so candidate will read either one continuous text divided into uh, sections or numerous of uh, short text on a related topic and then the candidate must match the correct text or the uh, correct text or text section to the questions so here we've got matching and then what type of text are they going to be working with? Text on topics of young people interest are interested in and can relate to. They could include articles from magazine, uh, from newspaper and magazine, or magazines. And then we have got task two, which is note taking. They will be writing brief notes and they supplied heading or headings related to continuous text of 400 to 500 words. So a text on topic that young people are interested in and can relate and they could include articles from newspaper or magazine. And then task four is um, four option multiple choice questions. Candidates will read the continuous text of about, you know, 550 to 600 words and answer multiple choice questions based on that text. And then the topics are basically the same as here. Uh, that they can relate to as young people and they can be from newspapers or magazines. And then coming to section uh, B, which is writing. Oh, one thing I didn't uh, mention. It's like, okay, we have got 10 points for the first task. Second task is 9. And then three task 3 is 8. And then task 4 is 8, which makes up 35. And then here we've got the writing, um, writing uh, section which is B, and it has two tasks, the guided writing. So a candidate will write approximately 100 to 150 words, continuous prose, letters, whatever, email, uh, report, or article in response to a short stimuli. So here it's guided, which means that they have got a guide, a stimuli um, that will help them write. For example, it could be a picture or three prompts that they have that will help them write and the questions will include information on the purpose format and audience and then this out is out of 15 marks and then the extended writings the candidate choose uh one of the three topics so which means they have um they have a choice there'll be three topics and then they choose one 
and then it could be one narrative one descriptive one argumentative or discursive uh, topic and then write approximately 200 to 250 words of continuous prose in response to a short stimuli so here it's there's more guide there's more help that will guide their writing here they'll just be told like uh, write a letter to blah 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 and they have more freedom when it comes to writing and it's longer in length as well that's why it's out of 20 to make up 35 all right so that is the reading and writing paper paper one and here we have got now an over overview of the paper like because we saw that they there are six tasks the first the first four tasks are for reading and then the two tasks are for writing and this is how they contribute to the final marks um, and then we have got now the listening paper which is paper two and this because it's just listening is a skill one skill uh, it means that we don't necessarily need to have sections but rather we just have a number of tasks we have got five tasks in this paper and remember we say that um, listening paper is out of 40 you can tell here and then how is the 40 divided so first task is eight points second eight third six eight and ten to make up a 40 and then when it comes to listening so a candidate will listen to four a short extract and answer two open-ended questions each worth one mark and uh, questions required short answers three words per answer and here what type of task is recording two recording of monologues and two recording of a dialogue so two monologues because they say four short extract so two are monologues and two are dialogues and of how many words we have got here about the number of words and the total is 320 to 380 words for this task and then task two candidates will listen to a talk and complete gaps so a minimum two words of a number per gap in notes or sentences so one formal or informal monologue and then they fill in the gaps the next one is candidate listen to six extract match each speaker with appropriate content candidate listen to six extract and match each speaker with appropriate content um, yes appropriate content and then you've got six short extracts and then each extract should be appropriate appropriately 80 to 90 words to make up 400 and 480 to 550 words and then we have got task four candidate listen to a discussion interview between two speakers so here we've got yeah short extract again here we have got like an interview between two speakers and then there'll be answers of four option multiple choice questions so after they listen to a formal or informal discussion or interview they answer a multiple choice questions and then the interviews are usually about 325 to 375 words and then the fifth task candidates listen to discussion or interview between two speakers and answer open-ended questions so here multiple choice here open-ended questions which are of higher order questions which ask how why and are requiring short responses of a phrase or a short sentence and then the type of text the listening text will be a formal or informal discussion or interview which is going to be about 350 to 400 words and this does next take makes up 10 marks of the 40 marks so that's what we have for the listening and then here you can see the um assessment objectives like what assessment objective are they talking about because he for the listening we have got four assessment objectives you can always go back to assessment objective to see what are they really testing the learners in these different tasks this should also have yeah it has the assessment objectives go back there be familiar and see what are they going to assess the learners on and then here we have got uh, the speaking uh, paper which is the third one and here we see that the assessment objectives because it's only one task anyway all right it's one task that the learners need to do and it's that's why all the speaking uh, assessment objectives are here one to five so the speaking text is, uh, test approximately 10 to 15 minutes and the marks is 30 all right assessment conversation is nine out of this 10 to 15 
nine to uh, six to nine minutes should be when the learners are assessed. All right, the speaking test can be described as a conversation between the learners and the examiner slash teacher. For each examination, a range of cards dealing with contemporary issues will be distributed to the center of by by the center to the center by the DNEA. So the centers that's the schools or whatever centers the exam, examination is taking place. And these are accompanied by detailed notes on how examination should be conducted. So which means you are guided on how to carry out the examination. You're just not left alone, left to swim, like thrown in the ocean and find your way. But they are guiding you. All right. So there's a map there. Uh, there is a guide. And then the objective of the assessment is to test the spoken language and not the sub subject knowledge. So it's not so much on the knowledge of the topic that they are talking about, but them being able to express themselves. So that's what you have to look at during this examination or this test. Um, so they tell you that the speaking test takes place before the main examination period, before the period centers will be received, will receive materials for the test. So before the actual examination, you will receive the materials of the examination. So the task format, so how is it really formatted? Teachers or examiners must allow sufficient time to familiarize themselves with the material and procedures, so which means you have to take time to really read the materials. Don't just come on the day of the examination, that's when you read about assessment of um, learner speaking, all right? Even this syllabus should give you guides already, like you should be familiar with the examination. After the test of the uh, center must be sent back, um, after the test, the center must send back materials to DNE for external moderation before the specified deadline. So there are deadlines on when you should, by when you should take this material back. Centers receive a range of speaking test cards, so there'll be test cards that the learners will use with um, an accompanying set of teacher notes. And so you are also given notes. Each card introduces a topic for discussion between the teacher and examiner and the learner, teacher slash examiner and the learners, together with prompt for the development of the conversation. The teacher slash examiner selects one card test, uh, um, one speaking test card from the range provided for each learner. Each speaking test lasts approximately 10 to 15 minutes as follows. So the first two, like this is how it's divided per se. We have got two to three minutes. The first two to three minutes should be a warm up. During the warm up, it's just like to help the learners calm down, ice break a kind of situation to calm down and you don't assist them during that time. And then uh, time for the candidate to, to read the speaking card and to prepare a response, the learners may not write notes. So they have about two to three minutes to read the card and also familiarize themselves with the um, with the topic and you know think about their responses for two to two to three minutes. And then it's only after this preparation that um, the learners then can have be assessed during the conversation. And remember that the learners cannot take notes. It should just be a mental situation whereby they think about what to say. And then learners may not may not use dictionaries. Uh, a teacher or examiner at the center assesses the testing using the speaking assessment criteria uh, grid. So there is a marking rubric, one can say, or marking criteria that you can use when you're um, assessing your learners. And then the stimuli, the topic on the card, relevant of interest of young people, the teacher notes on the cards. So these are the stimuli, like this will also guide you with how to talk to the learners. And here the topics are related to what um, are topics on uh, issues that the young people can relate to. And remember, it's out of 30 marks. All right, and that's all for the speaking. Oh, yeah, uh, before we move on. Like these are the topics possible topics that can be uh, included in the speaking speaking examination. And with that, we come to an end of the speaking paper, paper three. And then here we have got the grade descriptions. Here we've got the grade descriptions. And they say that um, we have got grades A, 
we have got C and E. These ones are other ones that are given because, okay, before, I mean, before A, we've got A star. So if the A students can demonstrate this, if they go beyond this, so they will get an A star. If they go beyond, uh, below this, they will get a B. And then we've got C. So if the learners go be below this description, you know, their ability is lower than this, and they will get D. All right. And then if their description is below this, they will get a uh, F. And then if they get below this, if they cannot demonstrate this knowledge, then they'll get a U. All right. So this is just a guide like, okay, for your learner to have A star, they have to perform beyond this. For them to get B, they have to perform beyond these um, competencies or abilities. And then to perform, to get a D, they have to perform beyond that. To get an F, they have to be uh, perform beyond this. And then if they get anything lower than that, they get a U. All right, here we have got now um, uh, the different, how do you say? We have got the different... Um, uh, guidelines on how to conduct the examination and this one the first one is basically on how to conduct speaking examination it will tell you like the general you know notes on conducting and recording the test and then they give you the general um, guidelines on how to conduct that so you're not all like by yourself you're not like you don't know how to do it or do you understand like you have to figure it out on your own no you're not figuring anything out on your own you have got the guides to help you and then they even talk about the ms1 forms that's where you record the learner's um uh, marks i wish they had included a sample of the ms1 forms if you know what i mean like it would be good to have that and then um you see like the tests like there's so much and i i will suggest that you 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 read this on your own but I think when we are going to look at the different skills then we can um, look at these guidelines in more details and then recording the speaking test so it tells you of what you should do and how you should label the CDs and then the general advice on being you know objective being realistic being consistent being positive during the conduction of the examination. Quite a lot of information right there provided for you. And then now moving on to the next one is like we have got general uh, marking criteria for task five, guided writing. So this is task five from the first paper, paper one, because it's reading and writing. Task five and task six are on writing. And this is now the gui guideline. How, how do you now assess the learners? And then here they tell you how do you award the marks. They told you it's out of eight. Uh, we have got, okay, content is out of eight. And then language is out of seven uh, to make up 15. Remember, it's out of 15. And then content covers relevance so, and development of idea. So they give you all the information of like how do you then grade your learners. And you should also use the same criteria when they they are doing when they are writing throughout the year not just for the final examination so that you're just familiar with how do you grade then how do you prepare your learners to perform better in uh, um, the examination all right so they tell you a little bit more about you know the style the accuracy what do we mean by style what do we mean by relevancy development of ideas all right and then here is a task five, award 15, up to eight marks is on content, up to nine, uh, seven marks is language. And then we have got the criteria itself below. We'll see it later. Oh, I mean, we can go there now. So criteria for task five, let's go there. So here we have got marking for guided writing. So they say, up to eight maximum eight is on content you can see here is content and then the criteria is like they have got five bands 
the lowest band is like 0 to 1, 3, 2 to 3, band 4, band 3, 4 to 5, band 2, 6 to 7, band 1, 8. And then when it comes to language, we've got 7, and then band 7, band 1, band 2, 5 to 6, band 3, 3 to 4, band 4, 1 to 2, band 5, 0 to 1. So that's what we have there. All right, and then we are going back. And then here we've got also general marking criteria. Like, you know, it's giving you guides and explanation of like, how do you then mark the extended writing? So content is out of 10 and language is out of 10 because the whole activity is out of uh, 20. And then when it comes to content, what, what are they talking about? The relevance, what is it? Development of idea, what is it? And then here, language, we've got style. What is style? Accuracy, what is accuracy? And then we have got all the information, like guiding information on how to mark your learners better, if you know what I mean. And then here we've got task six, awarding 20 marks, 10 is for content, 10 is for language, and it's out of 20. And then here we have got now the grid, a marking uh, grid. So we have got five, no, we have six bands. Band six is zero to one, two to three. And then here it's giving you like the information of how then do you say a learner have got four to five marks is because the content is specially relevant to the topic, pres uh, presentation is limited, inappropriate connection between paragraphs and stuff like that. So that's what we have there. And then for language, we've got 10 marks. And how do you know that they've got 10 marks? So this is what they should demonstrate. In eight to nine, this is what they should demonstrate for band two, band three. This is what they should demonstrate, six to seven marks. Band four, this is what they should demonstrate, four to five marks. Band five, this is what they should demonstrate, two to three, six. But that's what they should demonstrate. And then we even have, um, what do you say? We even have criteria of uh, um, specific assessment criteria for, uh, uh, ex uh, for speaking. Like how do you then give the learners marks? Remember it's out of, um, the total is out of 30 so for and then we've got 10 for structure 10 for vocabulary and 10 for development to make up a 30 so for them to get uh, 9 to 10 out of the three components overall then they should demonstrate this to get 7 to 8 they should demonstrate that do you get up to now when there's no response at all then they get a zero all right, and that's what we have for this. Now we are going to look at the activity that I've given you related to this um, related to this uh, topic. All right. So uh, the first question was the open-ended question. It says uh, read the and answer the questions below. A is discuss the sixth aim of the national curriculum guideline. In your own words so this is the list as it is and you're supposed to have done that like kind of explained it in your own words all right recognize um, that <gasps> learning involves the development of values attitudes as well as knowledge and skills so when the learners learn it's not just to learn the grammar but rather to have their values their attitudes their skill and knowledge developed through the process you know developed through this process of learning and then promote self-awareness and an understanding of attitudes, values, beliefs of others in a multilingual and multicultural society. So this is just like being aware of other people's um, beliefs, you know, being aware of what other people think, their attitudes and values, and then understanding those values and then encourage respect of human rights and freedom of speech, like really uh, respecting other people. And their rights and allowing them to express themselves freely and then provide insight insight and understanding of crucial global issues in a rapid changing world which affected by the quality of life in by such th by things such as you know the AIDS pandemic global warming environmental degradation maldistribution of wealth expanding and increasing of conflict technological explosion and increase 
increased connectivity and we have things like COVID as well, like pandemic. Uh, and then recognizing that as information in its various form becomes more accessible, learners need to develop higher cognitive skills of analyzing, synthesizing, interpretation and evaluating evaluation to use the information effectively so whatever information that they get they should just not take it as it is but they should be critical in how they take this information and being able to interpret it correctly um, synthesize it analyze it and evaluate it and then use that information in a correct way appropriately and effectively and then challenge and motivate learners to reach their poten full potential and contribute positively to the environment to the economy and society so those are like the six aims and you can see that we are teaching learners to become global human beings like holistic human beings um, and not just mainly to learn for the examination past the examination but to become better citizens in, um, in the country also globally and then the six scores are the ones with asterisk. We've got communication skills, information skills, problem solving skills, self-management and competitive, competitive skills, social and cooperative skills, work and study skills. So those are the core skills that the language can contribute towards. All right. And then moving on, state the six aims of the syllabus. We have looked at this already. So those are the six aims of this specific syllabus. And then, uh, do you understand those skills? Can you explain them to someone? All right, so that's something that you should do on your own. And then now we are moving on to, um, according to the NSSCO, what approach need to be used um, teaching the reading, writing, listening, speaking skills with its mention that is integrated approach. So which means you have to combine the skills you cannot teach them in isolation as I've already told you and uh, you know from conducting the um, I mean from going through the what's that going through the Monday from the language policy we say that is the learner centered like the learners need to be the center not just the teacher doing most of the work but the learners need to do the work as well and then here we are moving on to E um, according to Penny R. in 1990s, like from her book 1996, pages 176 to 177. It has given us, from this book, we can get, you know, information on like what kind of characteristics or features that the syllabus will have. We have things like consistent, comprehensive list of content items, words, structure, topics, or process item, task, or methods. In order, like there should, there will be an order in which the, the syllabus um, is covered the content is covered and then we have got uh, have explicit objectives may indicate a time schedule may indicate preferred method of method methodology or approach uh, public document uh, and then may recommend materials all right and then now for our syllabus does this the NSSCO syllabus have these characteristics now you have to answer that by saying yes or no for cons consist of comprehensive list of content item or structure or topics, yes, our syllabus has. And then you can see that from pages 8 to 23. 8 to 23, this is the learning content. From the learning content, you can see, you know, like they'll tell you, you sh the learner should be able to analyze a text. They should be able to um, to answer or give opinion, for instance, or find facts, opinion, all this, I, I feel like those will fall under the tasks, all right, the process item. And then there are also like certain words or structure or, or topics, okay, struct words, structures that you can see more, um, what do you see, more of that in, let's say, the section, the grammar section. And even like the other skills, you can see like there are certain words or structure or topics that the learner should know. And then the topics, for example, in the speaking on page 29, you'll see the number, like a list of 
topics that the learners will be assessed on when it comes to speaking. So yes, our syllabus does have a comprehensive list of either content items of both content item and process items. Both of them does have. And then does it have explicit objective? Yeah, we have seen that, for example, under listening, we have got the objectives. And then to even make it more specific, we have got the competencies. All right, they're also provided. And then we can see that under the learning content from pages 8 to 23 of the syllabus may indicate that time. Yes, we do have an indication of the time and we have spoken about that, that it will be either if we have a seven day cycle, it should be we have you should have nine periods that are out of 40 minutes over the two years. Or if it's a five day cycle, like Monday to Friday, then you should have seven uh, day period which each period is 40 minutes over the two years. So yes, we do have that in on page six. May indicate prefer methodology. Yes, we do have that on page six. It told us that we should use the integrative approach. And also in general, we should use the learner-centered approach. Do we have materials recommended? Yes, we have seen the number of materials on page seven that the, you know, the teachers can use. You know, and we have got the catalog on Neared, um, on the Neared website, and we have got. The, we are suggested that we should use things like magazines, newspaper, and all that kind of stuff, and the internet, to uh, supplement our teaching, the textbook, the syllabus. Um, do you understand? All that information is provided on page seven. So yes, it has all this. And now. Uh, we have got other suggested, like what other characteristic of feature does the NSSE syllabus has that is not mentioned in R? So mention at least uh, six characteristics or features that are not mentioned. And why are those characteristic, uh, characteristics or features, why are they provided in the syllabus? I think here we can go back to the syllabus, right? So let's go back to the syllabus and see. What are some of the other things that are not mentioned? Um, we can see here, okay, we'll just go through. Okay, it has an introduction. We have got the rationale. So that could be one of the characteristics, like that the bigger reason why. So the rationale is given because it's giving you the broader reason, like why is this syllabus created? you find that in the rationale. We have got the aims. Why is this syllabus created? What should the learners be able to learn in general from this syllabus? So we've got the aims. So the time we have already spoken about that is already mentioned by R. Prior knowledge is also one of the characteristics like who are the people to, um, to qualify to be part of this class where the NSCO, NSSCO syllabus is used. All right. Who are they? Are the ones who did the junior secondary. So it's telling you who is supposed to take this course. Progression. So it's also another feature. It's like after they have completed this syllabus, what are they going to do next? That's why it's given. It's like, oh, so then after this, what do they do? So but for the teachers, this is like material, so it's not part of this. So this is already what uh, Penny R has already mentioned. And then content, we have got objectives. They say explicit objectives. But again, another feature is competency, which uh, Penny R did not mention. Competency is provided and like division of like their skills. It's also something that they really didn't mention per se, but they just mentioned objectives. And then moving on, other features are like assessment objectives is also another feature that the assess the, um, the syllabus may have, assessment, uh, assessment objectives. Like how, why is it provided? It is just to give you an idea of like what are the learner expected to learn? How are they going to be assessed? What are they going to be assessed on? What do they need to demonstrate? All right. And then we have got the scheme of assessment, giving you details of how the learners are going to be assessed. All right. That's why it's just giving you an idea of like, how are they going to be assessed? And then we have got the marking and weighing part. It's also another feature, which will give you specific... Um, specific information of how many marks and how many percentage each section of the papers is going to contribute towards the final 
grade that the learners can have. We have got specification even in details, like the weight of each specific paper. All right, so that's what we have. And then the other part that we have, another feature that we can have is description of each paper, like getting into more details of how are the papers going to look like. All right, so that this is given because all the learners need to be aware of how they're going to be assessed. And the teachers also need to be aware of how the learners are going to be assessed so that they train them appropriately when it comes to the final examination. So, and then we also have got other features. Okay, description of the grades. What grades are they going to get is another feature. And another feature is like guidelines on how to carry out the examination. So guidelines on how to carry out the examination. So we have got that there how to carry out the examination, speaking examination, how to carry out the writing examination, how to mark the writing. And then we have another feature is the marking grid, the marking, you know, criteria, the marking, um, how do you say, the rubric on how to mark the learners is also another feature. This is also provided so that everybody, when they are marking the learners, they will be consistent, like they'll be marking the learners in the same way. Because if we are to give the learners uh, marks without such guides, some of the teachers might be like super lenient and some will be super strict and the learners will not have consistent marks when they are being marked. That's why even during the marking of the, the papers, people come together and then they agree on how they're going to uh, assess. They, they um, how do you say they come into a workshop that where they are trained or they are trained to like work on to see what is the highest that they can give and what is the lowest and then they will be given samples that they can mark all together and then they come to an agreement of like how are they going to mark it because obviously we are all different some of us are strict and some of us are lenient so to help us now mark the um, learners with some sort of consistency i know it's not going to be like 100 percent consistent uh um, then obviously we will need a training or we need some guide to help with grading uh, production work like writing here. And it's the same with why are this all this information, the guidelines given is for to help the teachers now be, be uh, you know, in some way be on the same page when they are marking the learners. So those are the number of features that you can, you could have mentioned here. All right. I think I've done, given that like an overall, a general idea of those features. And then here they say differentiate between learning objectives and competency. And um, we got those definitions from the language policy. And objectives are defined in terms of what that what learning is intended to happen, what learning is intended to happen in uh, at the level of the subject, what learning needs to happen objectives and then the competency here is like the significant like the specific cognitive operations like the specific uh, important skills attitudes and values that all learners should be able to demonstrate and they'll be assessed on all right they'll be assessed on this so that's that's the competency that's why the competencies are very 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 important and here now let's look at the true or false questions question two true or false Teachers are urged to use the texts that are intriguing and motivating to their learners. Yes, because that's why they have always, that's true, because they always say that um, the topic will be related to what the learners uh, can, I mean, the topics will be on subjects that the learners can relate on. So things need to be interesting to the learners. Whatever text that we use in the classroom should be interesting to the learners. And then number two, learning content is divided into six sections. Reading, writing, speaking, listening, vocabulary, and grammar. Grammar and language usage. This is false because vocabulary is not included. All the other five are included, but the vocabulary is not specifically separate. It does not have a subcategory. The learning content skills are subdivided into objective and competency. That's true. You can see when we have got, let's say, listening skill. Listening skill is divided into uh, objective and competencies. And then assessment objectives uh, stands for... <laughs> AO stands for assessment objectives. That's true. 
no explanation needed there. Five as we five assessment objectives as related in the NSSC or syllabus. That's false because we only have four assessment objectives. We have got the reading assessment objectives, listening assessment objective, writing assessment objectives, and speaking assessment objectives. We don't have like the grammar and language usage is not part of the assessment objectives. Uh, per se, like stipulated uh, in isolation. Uh, during the final examination, paper three, speaking paper takes about 15 minutes. That's true. We have seen that. During the final examination, paper two is a listening paper. That's false. Paper one is a reading and writing. And during the final examination, paper two takes about two, two, two hours, 30 minutes. That's false. It takes about 15 minutes, two and a half Two and a half hours is for paper one, which is reading and writing paper. And the highest grade Elena can get in the final examination is A star or A plus, which is true. And the lowest is G. And if they don't attain G, then they get a, they get a, what do they get? A U. The reading and writing paper is out of 70 marks. That's true, remember? A reading section is 35 marks and the writing section is 35 marks. Moving on, the listening paper weighs 20% 20, 20 of the final grade at the end of the year, for the end of year examination. That's true. The speaking paper is out of uh, 40 marks. No, it's out of 30 marks. All right. And then the weight of the reading section is 60% of the writing section. And 40% of the reading, uh, the reading section is 60% and uh, writing section is 40% in the reading and writing paper. The end of the year is false because it's 50-50. All of the skills, they, um, they make up 50-50. The raw mark of the listening paper is 40. It's true. Section A of paper 1 has two tasks, that's false, while section B has four, uh, four tasks, that's false. It's the other way around. Paper, the, section, the first section, section A has four tasks, section B has two tasks, okay, the other way around. Paper 2 consists of five tasks, that's true. Paper 3 consists of five tasks, that's false, there's only one because it's a speaking paper. And then the NSCCO syllabus provides guidelines on how to carry out the, out the speaking examination. That's true, it's given there, it's given. You're not all, all on your own. Then NSC syllabus has the guidelines and marking rubric for extended writing tasks stated. Uh, that's true. We have guide, guidelines on how do we assess the extended writing and we also have marking grid, marking rubric. So it's true. The guided writing and standard writing in the reading and writing paper have equal marks. It's false. It's not true. It's false because the guided writing is out of 15, the extended writing is out of 20. And then the guided writing and extended writing assessment of um, assesses the learner's language, style and accuracy and content relevancy and development in the reading writing paper that is true all right so that's how we assess them we look at their language which is style and accuracy and we also look at their content which is relevance and development and then uh the categories that are marked during the speaking examinations are vocabulary structure as well as development and fluency that is true so then and remember that's out of 30 so 30, uh, 10 marks for vocabulary, 10 marks for structure, and 10 marks for development and fluency. It's true. So that's what we have. And we've come to the end of section 3, activity. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in our last presentation, part 4. Cheers for now.